Hello again everyone, Edwin Learn back once again in this YouTube Astrological segment. I'm going to be talking about the November 19, 2021 lunar eclipse in Taurus, part one of two. Now, um, a lunar eclipse um, in astrology, um, for those that may not know, it's like a full moon, but uh, it can be much more powerful and intense. It can have uh, life-altering implications. Uh, the effects of a lunar eclipse can be much more sustained and protracted. Now, it can also reflect a major turning point in one's life. Now, this could manifest in very uh, exceptional, unrestrained, uninhibited unleashing of emotions. Excuse me, being in Taurus, it may be due to persistent goading or provocation that somebody has been on the receiving end of for a very long time. Um, it may have to do in some cases with somebody maybe not being valued. Uh, perhaps um, it could be an abysmal uh, monetary uh, situation that uh, someone may simply become very tired, exasperated, or full of. Um, it can be um, also where one, um, it could be really full of somebody that might be overly greedy, avaricious, or materialistic. Um, and this could be like a breaking point at this point in time. Now, uh, the thing about um, lunar eclipse is this transit, well, this can impact uh, all collectively, but especially those that have a, a Taurus or Cancer, Sun, Moon, or Ascendant Taurus, of course, because it's going to be in their sign. Now, in Cancer, uh, obviously, because the Moon governs the Zodiac sign Cancer, and the Zodiac sign Cancer is simply impacted very strongly by all transits and phases of the moon. Um, and perhaps this plays a role in why cancer can be very fickle, moody, and temperamental. Um, for Taurus, um, if it conjuncts their um, sun, moon, or ascendant, this could be very uh, significant and intensified. Now, um, also too, when you have a um, full moon lunar eclipse, there can be a greater propensity for accidents at this time. The fact it's a lunar eclipse as opposed to a regular full moon, it can be of a more serious nature. Um, a car you know, accident may be attributed in, in, into an attempt, uh, maybe being in a hurry to collect money. Uh, there may be serious accidents that are connected uh, with gardening, farming, or cultivation. It could be more than just you know, accidentally you know, cutting oneself on a gardening tool. Um, it may be something that could be much more serious. Uh, it could be, for example, involving a lawnmower or possibly, you know, you know, like a foot caught in a hopper, which is something that is connected uh, to a tractor that has blades from the, uh, the auger. I don't know if I'm saying it right, the auger in it. And it could also, um, this could manifest in some you know, serious injury in an accident that might um, be connected with the throat and neck area. Um, and also, too, it can be um, full moon uh, lunar eclipses can um, be a very powerful ending or culmination in something. Uh, since it's a lunar eclipse, it could be something that had been done for a very prolonged and sustained period. It may have been something that one had showed a lot of steadfastness, a lot of persistence, um, dedication in it. Um, and it could be... Um, something too that might um, could be again a lot of patience well I should say a lot of patience for a very prolonged time and it might be something that where something you might have valued for a prolonged period or maybe it's a situation where you simply felt like you weren't valued uh, enough and it might be something that might have had um, you know some you know, strong impact on the self-esteem self-esteem and so forth is associated with Taurus and it could be for better or for worse now um, another thing too again you know when you look at these uh, lunar eclipses just trying to say the what's going on with this lunar eclipse is that well the thing about this is there could be you know very um, powerful um, you know, again, it can be a powerful ending or culmination of something, but it could also uh, manifest in a very powerful revelation or unveiling. Now, being in Taurus, it might be, some cases, it could be some kind of financial manipulation. Um, 
say for, say for example, if it's adverse to natal Pluto especially, or say if it's in the eighth house, let's say the eighth house is connected uh, with manipulation, the eighth house in astrology corresponds with the zodiac sign Scorpio. Um, it can also be you know, something connected with greed, avarice, even perversion or depravity, um, you know, in a very lower, you know, negative manifestation, I would say Taurus can be sign connected, how you really can resort to you know, depraved you know, type uh, behavior. Um, it can be also too, um, if this falls in the first house, this lunar eclipse, it can be a revelation of the self where one becomes, for example, of being um, more cognizant of perhaps um, Sabine, you know, sensuality and indulging in pleasures that might be, those things might be taking precedence over other things that might have more significance um, or virtually everything else. Now, many may become cognizant of, um, you know, something where you know they have to make a decision that might be you know monetary related that can have life altering implications uh it can be something to um you know and it could again it could impact a very good part of their uh, a good part of their life now for a prolonged time period now another thing too is that um and it can be you know something about you know disclosure revelation of a payment it could be you know, government decision, payment for disability, or an inheritance that maybe somebody has waited for some time and finally comes through. It could be the discovery, in some instances, of money that had been hidden or concealed for some time, especially, say, if it falls in the 8th or 12th house. The 8th house could be connected with secrets. The 12th house is um, the house of the hidden um, and the unknown and... Um, Anyway, um, another thing too, again, talking about, you know, full moon uh, lunar eclipses, this could be a time again where, you know, somebody can become you know, very tired. Um, it can be tired, exasperated, full of something. It can be one where one has simply had enough once and for all of something. And given this is a lunar eclipse, it may be something that had, you know, gone on for uh, much longer than needed. It can be um, perhaps something with general complacency in one's monetary situation. It might be some, you know, maybe it's somebody you know, that you felt has been overly stubborn and obstinate. It could be even a, a monotonous existence or perhaps living timidly. It might be, um, say, especially if it conjuncts the sun because the sun is about life. Now, it could be um, someone, again, that could, that maybe has been overly greedy or avaricious or materialistic. If this falls in the, in the first house, say, it can simply mean not valuing yourself enough, and it might lead to something of something very important that you, you know, decide to do. It might be really strongly connected with yourself. You haven't valued yourself enough, and maybe this, and it could be very positively leading to greater self-esteem to do something, perhaps with new beginnings. For example, you might have procrastinated on, you know, for some time, and being more aware and cognizant of this. I'm going to have this in my first house, so it should be very interesting. And I'm saying, you know, at least a loose conjunction. Uh, to my um, to my Taurus ascendant, so this could be a very important uh, time for me, and it could be something with new beginnings being in the first house. Now, another thing is, now in some instances, this may uh, manifest in the end or culmination of a Taurus career, especially if it falls in the second, sixth, or tenth house, which are regarded as the money houses in astrology. Uh, it could be the end of working um, as a stockbroker, a pawnbroker, so anything with finance, uh, banking, gardening, uh, cultivation, art, geology, um, appraiser. It could be a position that maybe you've shown much persistence and dedication for some time, and you might, or you just may have simply ending something where you just didn't feel valued enough. So. And um, another thing too, again, is it really um, it's important to look at the house this falls in, as this could impact the delineation and interpretation. Now, then again, this is going to fall in my first house. Now, it could 
uh, manifestment of very powerful revelation or unveiling. It could be of a serious physical related matter, such as something to the throat, the neck, the thyroid, or esophagus. Now the moon, interestingly enough, it does also uh, govern the left eye in males. I have already had some issues um, with my left eye when the, um, you know, the transit black moon Lilith actually was conjunct my natal moon uh, in Gemini. And this could be something I'm hoping that's not going to be, you know, maybe a persistent issue, um, you know, as far as my eye goes at this time. And uh, the thing about it, because Taurus, again, is very persistent and stubborn energy. Now, uh, the thing about this is I've already had some issues with that, as I stated before, and I'm hoping it isn't going to be something that's very enduring. But um, again, uh, it could be also for me being, um, you know, awareness of valuing new beginnings and ones that may be enduring and lasting. And it could be, you know, being aware of myself, maybe being in some monotonous rut that has inhibited new beginnings for me. Again, the first house is connected with new beginnings. And um, anyway, people, that'll conclude this YouTube astrological segment. Until next time, people, Edwin Learner and Saints, stay well.